Revenue for the full year up 11? Yes. Uh, and, uh, and the results year on year, I guess, getting progressively better, right? Exactly. Our third year in, the row, the third year in a row of delivering more than 10% top line growth and more than 20% bottom line growth. So we're really delivering on sustainable, profitable growth. Uh, and I think that's a great thing. Where, where is growth coming from uh, either in, by region or by category, right? Yeah, now. you know, we're seeing it. We've really accelerated the pr new product velocity. And so that's really helped us in getting into a number of new homes, a record number of new homes. We're now in over 9 million homes. Um, and we're seeing it really across the globe. So there's about eight countries that we're in today. So we have a long-term opportunity in many other countries. Countries, but right now, we're seeing it across mostly the United States and Western Europe. Um, you also announced this acquisition of SNPs, yeah. about a $40 million acquisition, but yeah. still, it's a very you know, small startup, 50 employees, yep. Paris-based. Uh, in the AI space, what is your thinking behind this acquisition, and how does it help drive that growth that you were talking about? Yeah, I mean, Sonos is all about the experience, and, and, and the experience around audio, right? And we're in the golden age of audio, and we think that in addition to offering Amazon's Alexa and Google's Assistant, that we can do something special around voice to make that experience even better. And the kind of interesting thing with SNPs, too, is that it runs locally on the device, so it's a lot about privacy, right, and keeping your information at home, and so we think some of our customers will be interested in that aspect of it as well. You talk about new households, you got this IKEA partnership. Yeah. Is the emphasis on a new household formation or trying to get existing households to flip to new technology? Well, and this is, this is the thing that I think is least understood about Sonos, which is 37% of our sales every year come from existing customers coming back and buying another Sonos, right? And you saw during the year, the average number of products in a home went from 2.8 to 2.9. So part of what we do with IKEA and why we introduce these new products is to get into more homes. But unlike anybody else in the industry, People don't replace our products. They actually add on to them year after year. And so really, you know, we're trying to do both as we go through this. And we know once we're in somebody's home, they're probably going to come back and buy more. Um, let's talk a little bit about your supply chain, because during yeah. the quarter, margins took about a $30 million hit due to tariffs. Um, how are you, how is it impacting your CapEx as you look forward, especially as, you know, news trickles out every day that it seems like we may not even have a phase one deal by the end of the year? Yeah, so... We've taken a pretty conservative approach to this. We, we actually had margin improvement in the quarter, and what we did in guidance was point out that we're going to assume that these tariffs continue, and we're taking a short-term hit while we accelerate our global diversification to Malaysia. So we've been putting up a... We, for a long time, we've planned to expand our manufacturing globally, and we've accelerated that because of the tariffs. Um, but that's just a short-term hit. Long-term, we continue to stay on, on track with our 10% top-line growth, 20% bottom line. But we will take a short-term hit really on behalf of our customers because we'll eat it instead of our customers eating it. And we can do that because we're in a strong financial position. A couple questions. We were talking about tariffs during the break. Yeah. Why Malaysia? Uh, what other countries did you consider? And it's not like you're exiting your existing capacity. Why? So critical. You know, we, we've done, we put years into building, you know, our relationships and our team in China, and we don't want to lose that, right? And so we'll use China to continue to service a lot of the countries around the world, everywhere except the United States. And we chose Malaysia, Malaysia after looking at where are our suppliers, where's expertise to do the high-tech manufacturing that we want to do. Um, we looked at Vietnam, Malaysia, Taiwan, right, as other locations, and we felt Malaysia was the best. We'd actually been there in the past, believe it or not. So we first started when and we brought it up in Malaysia. So um, we have some familiarity with that market, and we think it's a great complement to what we do in China. Uh, the stock, you know, obviously has gone up about 50% this year, and, and you're making some deals on your own, making some partnerships on your own, but some analyst notes out this morning say that investors are, you know, still trading this as uh, a company that could have the potential to get taken out, uh, whether it's a take private or an acquisition. Is that something that you're considering right now? You know, as you can see from our results, we're very focused on the business and how we perform in the public market. We've got our first year as a public company in the books, and it was a strong year. We did what we said we, we were going to do, um, so we're going to stay focused on that.